Oh great, sounds boring. As usual, too much information. Wait, I the pencil, economist, lecture gives a simple yet... Simple? What have we found, Emily? We? Sit down, Emerson, and we've found... We need to understand how it is that a free market works to enable millions of people to cooperate peacefully together. I know no better way to bring this out than by a very simple example that I owe to an old friend of mine, Leonard Reed, who once wrote a little article called I the Pencil. I am a pencil, a commonly known implement, yet I, pencil, simple though I appear to be, have a profound lesson to teach. And I can teach this lesson better than a car, an airplane, or computer because I am so seemingly simple. You know, it's a funny thing, he said, there's nobody in the world who knows how to make a pencil. Now that seems like a silly thing to say, isn't it? This is just the most obvious thing. It's only a piece of wood with a, something black in the middle and a little red tip at the end. What do you mean nobody knows how to make a pencil? Well, suppose you were to start to set out to make a pencil. This yeah. isn't a how-to video, is it? First of all, you have to get some wood, don't you? Where do you get the wood? Home Depot? Shh. You have to go to the Pacific Northwest, probably, and cut down some trees. How do you cut down some trees? You have to have some saws to cut it with. Where do you get the saws? You have to have some steel. Where do you get the steel? You have to have a steel mill. So in order to know how to make a pencil, you would have to know everything there is to know about how to start from iron ore and coal and get iron and convert it into saws and cut down trees. But that's only the beginning. This black stuff in the middle that we call lead isn't lead. It's graphite. And I am told it comes from some mines in South America. This little red tip at the top, that's rubber. Where's it come from? Well, the major source of natural rubber is Malaya. That's quite another distance. Except now it's called Malaysia. Call it what you want. Still ends up at Office Max. Correct. Hundreds of people had to work together just to get the raw materials to the manufacturer, then hundreds more had to coordinate to make each one of me. Yet, oddly, there isn't a single one of them, including the president of the pencil company, who contributes more than a tiny bit of know-how. So the difference between the logger in Oregon and the miner in South America is in the type of know-how. And these know-hows naturally, yes, automatically arrange themselves into creative and productive patterns in response to human necessity and demand. Who told that fellow over in Malaya to tap his tree and send a little bit of rubber over here to put at the end of this pencil so I could have a pencil in my hand? Yeah, who's the mastermind? Maybe the government. No, that's been tried and failed miserably. When the government masterminded production in the Soviet Union, people had to wait in long lines to purchase scarce and shoddy goods. But in the free market, self-interested entrepreneurs freely trading among themselves, each seeking as much profit as possible, manage to make lots of me because they are guided by something called an invisible hand. The invisible hand. What's that? I'm not sure, but if it's invisible, it's probably not the government. That's the miracle of the price system. Because note, these thousands of people who have been led to engage in this simple transaction with me, not one of them has been forced to do it. Nobody has had a gun to his head. They've all done it. Why? Because each one of them thinks he's better off in this transaction. Otherwise, they'd be like, cut down your own trees. There's this terrible tendency, and most economic fallacies derive from that tendency, to think of everything as what the game theorists have come to call a zero-sum game to think there's a fixed pie. And if I get more, you must get less. Many people think that when Bill Gates makes a billion dollars, the rest of us have a billion dollars less. The great insight behind the free market, the great insight of Adam Smith's great book, The Wealth of Nations, was that it is not a zero-sum game. That it is possible for both people to afford to a transaction to benefit. Because by trading, 
They don't divide the pie, they bake whole new ones. So Bill Gates making a billion dollars doesn't mean the rest of us have a billion dollars less. Exactly. That wealth earned by some must come at the expense of others. It's very easy to see that principle operating if you think of, of two people under any circumstances making a voluntary deal. Hey, if you go buy me a water, I'll give you my notes. Sure. Seems like a fair trade. Fair because both Emily and Emerson get something. All voluntary trade is win-win, not a zero-sum game. The free market can operate without any central direction because all parties enter into a transaction voluntarily. Ergo, it's not a zero-sum game because both parties think they'll be better off, that they'll benefit or they wouldn't make the deal. And finally, the key is what Adam Smith called an invisible hand. The still unsolved mystery. Wait, does that look to you like a hand? You are so corny.